Hello folks, today I'm going to be taking a look at the latest Deathfield release from Wargames Atlantic. It is the Bulldogs, if you fancy a bit of British in space. Okay, so the greatest sport is war. The Deathfield's Bulldogs contains 24 multi-part plastics. And as you can see, in the far off future, there are sons that never set on the British Empire, or at least on the Imperial sons and daughters that make up the Bulldogs team. One of the stars of the Deathfield circuit. Their combined team formed of abductees taken from the shadow of Isan Dwala, the banks of the Somme and the streets of Arnhem. So it gives you a sort of idea roughly what you're going to see in here. If you're unaware, Deathfields works on the principle that aliens have been abducting humans for some time um, to fight in essentially a sports arena because it amuses them. So you end up with uh, Napoleonic French fighting colonial era British with alien tech. All right, so starting at the top with the heads, say at the top with the heads, we have more at the bottom. You have the sort of standard layout, which is you'll get a set with bare faces and a set with gas masks, um, which is true for everybody except the beret wearing sort of airborne or commanders, I suppose, if you want to do them as commanders. Uh, there's an ossifer with his peak cap. So we've got the tin pots from World War One slash two. There you can see the uh, gas masks. Then up the top here, another set of peak caps. A couple more of the berets. We have the pith helmets and pith helmets with gas masks. So some nice detail there. The pith helmets have the um, cloth band around the top. That I would more associate with um, the Sudan than uh, Sandwana. But nice nonetheless. Lovely level of detail and character on the faces. Uh, the same on the gas masks, you just can't see it because the gas mask is in the way. Weapon wise, we have a variety. So you can see here in the center we have a. Uh, sword, some sort of large plasma or laser gun, uh, a machine gun or an assault weapon. We have a pistol, grenade launcher, and then there's a few more pistols and machine guns and the rest are mostly bayonet fitted rifles. So kind of Lee Enfield-esque. So support weapons and standard rifles. There are three backpacks per sprue. Uh, you can make six miniatures per sprue and there are four sprues in the box, giving you 24, which means if you're doing veterans, maybe 12 of them get the packs. Uh, bodies and torsos are separate. Flip that over so we can have a look. So the uh, upper torso is separate and distinct and uh, they've been sort of sci-fied or steampunked up a bit with these big uh, knee pads. So a bit of additional armor and the bodies, they have their webbing and they all seem to have a, uh, I suppose it could be a, some form of lock on them, like a bomb collar to stop them running off. They are, after all, prisoners fighting for amusement. But overall, sculpts are great. Uh, there was one slight bit of flashing I noticed on an officer's cap here. That seems to be the same on most of the sprues, but it's on the edge of the peak. So just running a knife around it will do the job. Otherwise, flashing is minimal across the rest of the sprue and the detail is, is superb. Um, one little detail to note, because
because I didn't build one with a sword, which is remiss of me. Um, the sword itself is actually a lion's head with these three spikes coming out instead of the sort of um, Basque hilt. You've got that lion, which makes sense for your sort of imperial British. So with those out of the way, have a look at some of the built figures. Okay, so first off, I've got a kneeling rifleman shooting from the uh, the trenches of the Somme to the trenches of some far off alien death world. Popped his pack on, so he's got a nice bergen with a blanket strapped to the top. A little bit of clean up to do on things like the uh, the sprue gates and the mold lines, but I didn't bother cleaning these. They're just cleaned enough to get them on there. Love that tash. Real officer type. And again, nice sturdy weapon. Bayonet is thin without being thin to the point of snapping when you look at it, um, which is a difficult thing to do. I have some Perry British colonial troops and their bayonets break as soon as you look at them. And I have some warlord British colonials who have got a, a bayonet that's almost as thick as the rifle, which will never break off. Uh, I think this is a, a good halfway house. It looks like a proper bayonet. Uh, but doesn't should stand up to uh, being packed away in a case and played with without falling off on you. Speaking of colonials, I've got one of our colonial gentlemen moving forward. I like the fact they've done the torso separately on these. I know a lot of the others haven't for speed of build. It's just arms and heads on. Uh, but this allows you to pivot, change it a bit more. And possibly even mix and match them with some of the other things. I know War Games Atlantic are trying to keep everything scaled, so um, you can mix components throughout different kits. And there is that Vietnam-looking space grunt box on its way from the Reptilian Overlords collaboration, which are also split um, torsos, although they are big, big, chunky guys. So, But again... Really nice detail. You can see there a slight seam line down the leg, but it is very minimal, just across the putties. So clean up would not take long with any of these. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention is the arms are paired on the sprue. Uh, just quickly pop that in so you can see that. So if you're looking for uh, R3, then you'll be looking for L3 to go with. Uh, some of them, like like the L3, is also paired with L7, um, which means if you want to do both, you may find yourself swapping arms around off different sprues. We have an officer. You can tell he's an officer. Peak cap, pistol, stop for a brew. again beautiful design paint and like you can see from the box it paints up equally well in khaki as it does in scarlet so regardless of how you you plan on using your bulldogs they uh they'll do well in either way i know some people didn't like the webbing on them and the additional armor but these are after all Sci-fi. We've a cigar chomping. Airborne. Again, he could have got a backpack with Bergen, but you know why? Must be an officer. He's pointing. If you're wondering about scale, they are. Boom! 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 Twenty, is that twenty-seven, almost twenty-eight, to eye level, and he caps out just under thirty for height to the top of his beret. He's one of the more upright fellows. And then support weapon-wise, we have this massive laser cannon or plasma cannon.
with the gas mask. Gas mask and pith helmet is a good look. I think they should still use it today, to be fair. And then we have our support machine gun. So this is based on the Lewis, which makes sense. Again, he got a bit of a pack on him, presumably for stuff with extra ammo. Uh, this was the one I ran into problems with. So you might be able to see there, the connection isn't quite flush. Um, I think because this handle has to connect with the body, I think you may need to trim away some of the inner shoulder to get a flush fit there. It just didn't go on naturally for me. So glue this arm on first, line this up with the handle, and then trim away whatever you need to trim from this joint to get a, uh, a seamless join. But I thought I would throw that out there so people could keep an eye. The rest of the models went together a dream, so that was the only little issue with the kit I found was just that that um, lineup. And because I glued this arm on first to match this gun with it, I ran into issues shoulder-wise there. So if you're going to do it, do it the other way around. But again, beautiful figures from War Games Atlantic, and a really uh, spiffing set of miniatures. If you're planning on building out a, a feudal army for uh, one page rules, or if you're planning on running some Praetorians for 40K for the Imperial Guard, um, these will do the job equally well. And hopefully in the future, we'll see the death fields rule set itself. So maybe we can drop some airborne on them. But there we have it, the Bulldogs. Okay, there we have it. Another set from War Games Atlantic. Um, another great set from War Games Atlantic has to be said. I have a ton of Praetorians from my Imperial Guard days, um, which you just couldn't get for love nor money. Uh, these, I know some Imperial Guard fans, Praetorian fans in particular, wanted just the Praetorians to be released, which is another company's IP and another company's take on things. I prefer the War Games Atlantic style, to be perfectly honest. Um, the Praetorians were just head swaps on Mordian Iron Guard, so they had, you know, tasseled epaulets and, and um, the, the breast buttoning was down one side, it wasn't down the middle. This looks like a British uniform that has been taken and sci-fied, so having those little extra things like the, the collar frippery, I'm going to call them greeblies actually because that's what they would call them in, in something like Star Wars. Having those little touches, the little greeblies put on here and there, not detracting from the uniform. So it's still very clearly a British tunic, British helmet, paddies. And then depending on how you want to paint them, you can paint them colonial, you can paint them khaki. You can have your World War One slash two sci-fi fighters. Um, they've got a bit of extra armor on them, shoulders and knees, and uh, I suppose on their, their torso as well, where the, the back webbing sort of comes together. So they, they don't just look like somebody stuck a sci-fi rifle into the hands of a plastic World War One figure. They do have a look, uh, which is very coherent. I also like the fact that they've decided to make these torsos separate. Um, I really like the long coat, uh, the grognards that they did for Deathfields, and I like the Ram Jaeger, both of which had solid torso and legs. Um, because they have these coats on with the British having the tunic and the webbing and the belt it means you have a bit more posability and a bit more customization so you can really go to town with your squads you can mix and match repositioning should be so much easier um, just that slight issue with the Lewis gun and like I say I think if you just trim down the inside arm that problem goes away so it's not going to even going to be a massive issue um, but yeah let me know what you think of the Bulldogs if you're going to be picking them up, um, if you played the game when you were a kid out in the streets, British Bulldogs 1, 2, 3, uh, I'm going to head on. Until next time, folks, bye-bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.